One of the best adventures in western Washington includes hopping onto a state ferry and heading out across Puget Sound. You could make it a day trip. Hi everybody, we're on our way to Vashon Island today. Come on, join us. Vashon Island is only 22 minutes away from downtown Seattle, but it's a world away. There's no bridge connecting it to the mainland, making this beautiful woodsy island relatively unspoiled with a definite fun factor. It's home to about 10,000 people, and community here is big. It's also home to a beautiful KCLS library. This 10,000 square foot facility at Ober Park is the center of the community. It's also focused on bringing information and community to others. We're here with Tess Mayer, who is Director of Outreach Programs for the King County Library System. Mm -hmm. Hi, Tess. Hello. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. First, tell me what out outreach programs are. What's the definition of an out outreach program? Well, we consider outreach to be a really important aspect of the work we do at the library because really, um, even though we have these beautiful library buildings, we know that the community is everywhere. Mm -hmm. And in that way, we want to serve people everywhere, wherever they are, because we know that for some people, whether they be children, perhaps in childcare, or seniors who are homebound, um, they're just not going to be able to get to a library and so we want to be able to serve everyone. So um, we have over 10 different vehicles. Um, a lot of people know them as bookmobiles. So we have 10, over 10 different vehicles that go to different types of sites. Um, and there's a whole crew of staff that go to adult or senior residences and they deliver books and they deliver reserves to people so people can put things on hold and then have them delivered by the outreach staff and we also have vehicles that go to child cares and at those stops it's really exciting because the kids have the opportunity to actually get on the vehicle they have the opportunity to choose their own books and we feel like that's a really important part of extending the library experience to, to kids that otherwise wouldn't make it into a library. Mm -hmm. well, when you talk about going, for example, to, to, to seniors, mm -hmm. does the, do the vehicles, good old bookmobiles, et cetera, do they go to individual homes or do they go to sort of a central place and folks can come use it? We have teams of staff that visit larger senior residences. In fact, there's one on Vashon uh, that we visit once a month as well. And what the staff do is actually roll carts of books into the residence so that um, we don't have seniors trying to navigate getting on a bookmobile or um, being in a confined space. And so we make it as comfortable and as accessible as possible and then the seniors are able to browse the, the carts of books that are available. Um, we also have a different homebound program um, for individuals where we have a mix right now of staff and a few volunteers who also deliver books to homebound individuals. Well, how do you decide how to reach out and what to reach out with? <laughs> I think that's such an interesting and complicated uh, question. <laughs> I have a complex I, mind. Feel free. Go right I ahead wish we had me. more time. Um, one of the things that's really important for us to do uh, is look at data and look at demographics and see how communities are changing. And one of the things that's really exciting about King County is that there are huge changes taking place uh, within the county. For example, we know that there's the the senior population is really booming and and is only going to increase and so that helps inform our planning for mobile services and for our outreach services to reach seniors it also helps us understand 
um, how to use librarians' time, you know, should, see, should they be doing more outreach to senior centers. The, the demographic shifts in Seattle are really affecting people and, mm -hmm. and as, as the city becomes um, somewhat less affordable, people are moving out to the county. And what's interesting is that sometimes the social service infrastructure doesn't move as quickly. And so we're finding ourselves in a position to really help address a lot of needs that these people are having as they move to different parts of the county. We also pay attention to um, demographics and census data around language. We know that um, Spanish is the, is the largest second language aside from English spoken in the county. And so we make sure to, to deploy our resources to support that. So for that reason, we have um, a program coordinator who just focuses on um, Spanish language programming. Mm. And I should have said this earlier, asked this earlier, this is all free. Yes, thank you so people, much. You're welcome. Uh, which a lot of people just, it doesn't click. You know, if, if, if I say it, if you say it, if librarians say it, it's free. That is such an important thing to emphasize. And I found in my early years as a librarian, when I was doing mostly outreach to um, non-English speaking communities, that was probably the second thing I said. The first thing I said was welcome, we want you here and we're so happy you're here. And the second thing I said was, everything's free. What makes you happy at the end of the day? What makes me happy at the end of the day? To think about um, how, we might have, how we might have helped someone, how we might have uh, helped someone help themselves, affect change in their life, and also just how did we bring joy, mm -hmm. right? Um, the library is still a place for recreation and fun, and we still want to make sure that, that people have an opportunity to relax, that they remember that, that they can find some, some peace and enjoyment, um, whether it be reading a book or streaming something from one of our services or spending time with their child maybe, just quietly in a library or reading a book. I think um, we're missing those opportunities and people are hungry for more of those opportunities. And I'm happy to be part of an institution that just reminds people that we're here, you can do it, all you need is time. It's very much about that. And it's, it's not just books. It's not just this tangible or touchable thing. It's all about learning. Yes. And that we're never too young or we're never too old. And also I think there's just a practical issue in terms of the future of education and lifelong learning is the future. Uh, we know that the way that education works is going to be changing and people's ability to access jobs and be prepared for future jobs is going to depend on their ability to continue to learn. So as we've been talking and uh, I imagine folks are wondering, whoa, how do I get into this? Call your local library, right? Call your local go online, library, do something. go online. Um, so much information is available on our website and we have such fantastic staff that are really excited to talk with people about all of these things. And so. the website's kcls.org. Yes. You know, that's pretty cool. Yes. Thank you, Tess Mayer. Thank it's great you. to meet you and great to have great you Great to here. meet you too. Thanks Thank for you. having me. Thank you. <laughs>If you're like me, you always have a KCLS library card tucked away. But now, you don't even have to have a plastic card to tap into the library's online collection. All you need is an e-card. We're with Bruce Schauer, who is the Director of Collection Management Services for King County Library System. Good morning. Well, we're here today to talk about e-cards, right. right? You go. What's an e-card? The King County Library System e-card is a online access only library card which is now available to all of the King County Library System service area residents. Mm -hmm. And how's that different from a traditional card? I have a tradi I've got the library card like lots of folks do. Wonderful thing about the new e-card is that you can go online, apply, and then almost instantaneously you'll have a, a library card and you can use our uh, wonderful online resources. And so that includes our research databases. We have free online tutoring, language learning courses, exam preparation tools, and uh, business and information, uh, investment information. Um, also our digital um, e-books and audio books, 
online newspapers and magazines, TV and music, and, uh, and that's what you get with that e-card. Now, with the traditional card or the full library access card, you can use all the physical materials in our libraries, the books, the music, the TV shows that are on DVD, newspapers and magazines, uh, our public access computers and printers, and also you can reserve library materials online and have them shipped to your local library. So with the e-card, I don't have to leave the farm. I can stay home and just, you know, look to my, my heart's content, right? You, you could, but there's uh, some advantages, a lot of advantages <laughs> to, to coming into the community of library. Uh, we've got meeting rooms, we have programs and services you don't, uh, you know, in our meeting rooms. You don't need a library card or even an e-card to, to come to the library and use the resources or talk to our staff. What's the most um, popular so far among e-card users? What are they after? Uh, mostly that what they're after, it seems like, is romance materials, historical fiction, and general fiction is the, are generally the most popular. Really? Yeah. And what about films, music, things like that? It's mostly the current things is that it? are available uh, on, to us. We don't um, have the same things as, say, Netflix, but it's, it's, it's current films that we can get. Plus, people like to go back in time. We also have a service called Canopy, uh, which we recently subscribed to, that um, has independent films that you, you don't tend to see in the theaters. If I want to get an e-card, tell me again, how am I out there where they're watching us? Yeah. How do I do this? How well, do I do just this? Go to our, you'll just go to our website, and uh, at the bottom of the website, there's a place where you can click for library cards, and there'll be an option for you to apply for an e-card if that's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, you'll fill out the basic form. They ask for your name, your address, you know, your birth date, and then uh, you'll uh, click when you're done. That'll uh, go off, we'll verify, automatically verify that your address is within our service area. And then within moments, you will get a PIN number and a library card number in your email. Okay, so after this, I am going to be the very next e-card applicant. Thank you. Great. <laughs> it's great to have you here, Bruce. All right, thank And good you. luck with this. We'll look forward to seeing you again down the road to watch King County continue to grow. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. As I've said, Vashon is a fun, tight-knit community with many loyal library patrons. And the library also has a great group of friends. These folks help with fundraising. We're here with the co-presidents of the Vashon Library's Friends of the Library, Lisa Lukey and Carolyn Turner. Thank you for being here. It's great to have you. What drew you to libraries? What drew you to, and, and specifically to the Friends? Uh, I've always been a big reader. And uh, as a child, I always visited the library and moving to Vashon, it was just, I used the library all the time. Um, I knew someone who was a member of the Friends and they were promoting it and so I decided maybe that's time to join. Time to join. Lisa, same, similar? Oh, absolutely. I can, um, when I moved to Vashon, I was retired and, and I was looking for, you know, activities or things to do and I've always been a reader mm -hmm. and loved libraries. and. Uh, I saw an ad in the Beachcomber, you know, if you want to help out with the book sale, then come on, and I did. And so I've been doing that ever since, probably about four years ago. That's great. Well, the Beachcomber is, is newspaper here. Mm -hmm. online, the local right? paper, yes. And, and probably it wasn't too much of a stretch. You were an English teacher. Yes. Right? So yes. here you are. Yes, here when, I am. When you talk about um, the Friends, I'm, I'm thinking that a lot of your activities involve with fundraising and making sure this thing has some, mm -hmm. some money besides what you know, officialdom gives a, a, very, a, a library or its branches. Mm -hmm. You have a couple of big events a year? We do, <laughs> we have a book sale, a big book sale, um, one in the spring and one in the fall. Mm -hmm. And we also have a bookshelf that we stock with books all the time. That Which people, is here at the library, right? Here at the library, yeah. people can just stop by and buy mm -hmm. books mm -hmm. whenever they want to. Mm -hmm. Where do you get the books? Where'd they all come from? All over? Donations. We'll even go to people's homes who aren't able to bring books, because books are heavy, and go through their books with them and say, yes, you know, we can, we can use these books. Or, you know, some are quite old and, you know, not easily sellable. Yeah. Um, but we have people drop off all manner of bags of books. <laughs> what are the big sellers? 
Um, we have a lot of art books. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, some are, are pretty, um, I won't say technical, but they're very nice. Sure. Uh, kind of a coffee table type mm -hmm. book. Mm -hmm. um, tons of cookbooks. Cookbooks are big. Mm -hmm. They're big. And gardening, very yes. big. Gardening go. books. Our branch is lucky to have a, an island of readers. There are people on this island who, you know, might be retired authors or screenwriters. We do very well with book sales. And you also have a, a, a golf tournament, is that we right? Do. It's mini golf. We um, had a nine hole golf course set up inside the library. And Here? I, oh yes. yes. Really? Oh, yes. Yeah. Great. And I got the idea from um, looking at websites about mini golf on the East Coast, friends, library groups. So we got in the swim and bought these little golf putters. They're real cute and the you know little balls and they didn't want us to use real golf balls inside the library for a reason. You might you might be asked to leave or you might be asked to leave the friends it, of the um, Exactly. Yeah, and each of our holes had a, a theme. Yeah. You know, we had that was vaguely connected to literature. Why is it important for a, a branch like Vashon to have friends? I think it's important because a lot of our, the funds that we raise, they go to help the librarians put on all these programs for the community, mm -hmm. and especially the children and the teens. We have some very successful programs for them. Our librarians are very good, and we can provide extra funding for them. And so the other part of the question is, what do you get out of it, being a friend? I think being part of the community, you know, in a different way, and you know, people will see each other and know, how's it going, and oh, what book are you reading, and you know, just the, I think the community spirit um, really comes together in an, in a small event like like we give. So it's it's important. You feel part of the community. This is so good. Thank you both, Lisa, Carolyn. It's great to meet you, and good luck. And don't forget the golf invitation, okay? We'll find we'll, you. We'll, we'll find you. Okay. Certain. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you both. Looking for something to read? There are so many great titles and genres to choose from. Well, we've got some recommendations for you. We're here with Emily Cockins. Emily is the um, Reader Services Coordinator for King County Library System. Welcome back. It's great to see you again. Thank you for having me. And I'm looking forward to this. There's a program called Ten to Try. What's Ten to Try? So Ten to Try is our year-long reading challenge. We have ten categories picked out, and the goal is to read one book in each category between the beginning of the year and the end of the year. So even if you haven't started, you have until December 31st to finish the challenge. If you finish, you get a little pin that recognizes your efforts, and you get entered into a drawing for tickets to Literary Lions, which is our big author gala that the KCLS Foundation hosts. That's very cool. Yeah. So does it count if I've already read some of these books? Sure, as long as you okay. read them this year. <laughs> there are no tests or anything? There's no test, yeah. The goal is just to encourage people to think about what they're reading and broaden their horizons a little bit. Well, that's that's what I was thinking, that it's across genres. So exactly. If you're like a big murder mystery fan, well, maybe you ought to branch out a little bit. Yeah, and you may discover something you love. I'm definitely a fiction reader for the mm -hmm. most part, but some stuff that I read last year in nonfiction I ended up really loving, and I probably wouldn't have tried it without Tend to Try. Perfect. So, Tend to Try, today we've got Five to try. <laughs> yes. Okay. What are the five? All right. Tell us about so it. So I bought I brought five. One for um, each of five of our ten categories. So our first pick is and now we have everything on motherhood before I was ready by Megan O'Connell. This is a memoir. It came out earlier this year. O'Connell was um, 28 years old. She was living in Brooklyn. Had just gotten engaged and she found out that she was pregnant. It wasn't a planned pregnancy. They decided to go ahead and have the baby. And this is about her being pregnant, childbirth, and then what it's like to be an early mother. And it's just um, frank, it's funny, it's vulnerable. So often the stories that we hear about parenthood are all glowing and um, Megan really gives you the full spectrum from the very good to the very bad. Um, and that's for the category read a biography or memoir. Okay. Um, this is for the category read a book with four or more words in the title. It would also count for read a young adult book. <laughs> Isn't that fun? That, that, would, that would bump me up a step in terms of my intelligence. <laughs> 
So this is The Knife of Never Letting Go. Mm -hmm. This is by Patrick Ness. It's the first book in a three book series about a young boy named Todd. He's grown up in this village where he's the youngest person. Everyone else in the village is men. Um, when he was very, very young, a virus came through, the women were all killed, and the virus gave men the ability to hear each other's thoughts. So they're constantly surrounded by this cacophony that they call noise. Well, right before his 13th birthday, Todd goes out into the woods and he finds a patch of silence. It's something that he's never encountered before and it leads him to question everything he knows about himself, about his community, and he ends up going on the run. It's a fantastic series, really unique, really incredible writing. That's The Knife of Never Letting Go. Um, my next pick is The Miseducation of Cameron Post by Emily M. Danforth, and this is for the category Made Into a Movie or TV Show. So this was made into a movie um, that just won the Grand Jury Prize at Sundance this year. It's for 2018. For 2018. 2018? Okay. Yep. Yeah. So this is a coming of age story set in Montana in the 90s. Um, our heroine is Cameron. She's 12 years old when the book opens, and she's just kissed a girl for the first time. Um, that same day, her parents die in a car accident, and she ends up going to live with her very conservative aunt. Um, it's Montana in the 90s is not an easy place to be a young queer woman, and so she, the book is about her grappling with that, but also about all of those other coming-of-age things, mm -hmm. the friendships that she has, sort of discovering who she is. Um, it's not always an easy read, but the writing is so beautiful, so lush, um, just fantastic story. Mm -hmm. And again, that's for a book made into a movie or TV series. Okay. Uh, this is my pick for read a book set in a place you've never been before. This is The Dry by Jane Harper. It's set in the Australian Outback, which is a place I've never been before. So right. works for me, works for you. Yeah. This is a mystery, and it is a great mystery. Um, the main character is a federal agent. He's left his hometown as a teenager, basically chased out of town after something sort of terrible happened and hasn't been back since. More than a decade later, his childhood best friend dies in what looks like a murder-suicide. So he goes back to town to sort of figure out what really happened. So we end up with two mysteries. One, what's happened to his friend in the current time, and two, what happened in the past to sort of drive him away. Um, and it's called The Dry because the town is suffering under this terrible drought, and it's just really, you get the sense of the oppressive heat and the crops failing and sort of everyone really being on edge. Uh, it's a great mystery, just unputdownable. It really is. I, I got to meet Jane. Uh, and, and happily, at just after the dry oh, cool. was out, and I was just totally swept up in this book. What I liked, as you say, it's not just the drought, but there's this dryness in a fascinating way to the whole story and all the characters. Yeah, absolutely. Really, really it's very well done. Yeah. So that's The Dry by Jane Harper. And then my last pick, I actually am reading on my e-reader. Um, so that one is Trail of Lightning. It's for the category Read a Book by a Native American Author. Um, the author's name is Rebecca Roanhorse, and it's a fantasy set in sort of not too distant United States, post-apocalyptic world. Much of the country has been destroyed by flooding and storms, and what remains are little sort of city-states. Um, our heroine is Maggie. She is Na Navajo, and she lives in an area called Dinata, which is the traditional name of the Navajo um, homeland. So she is a monster hunter. The floods and storms have not only destroyed the country, but awoken Navajo gods and monsters. And she is on the trail of some monsters that are leaving devastation in their wake. So it's this really fascinating combination of sort of this wild, lawless West with um, Navajo folklore. Right. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Now we've done five for five. You know, we've done five we've of done ten. Five. Yes. The other five are a mystery to me, <laughs> but they don't have to be a mystery to these folks, right? That's right. They find the other five. Yes, you can go to kcls.org slash 10 to try to see all 10 categories and get more information about how to participate, okay. how to keep track of what you're reading, and how to enter to win some prizes. So I'm already one for 10. You no, are. I'm one for five. Oh. I got to go look at the other five and see how You do. Emily, thank you. This is great. Yeah, my pleasure. We get to see you again. I'm yes. sure, because we have a lot to talk about in terms of great reading. We do. Thank you. Yeah. Great to see you. You too. What a fun adventure on Vashon Island. Thanks for joining us. You can visit us online at kcls.org. We will see you next time.
Am I a you? Oh, say that again? You can make faces at Melanie if you want to. We're here with Tess Mayer, who is the director of Outreach. Out, blah, blah, blah. Are we done? All right. All right. No, no.